Alright, what is going on guys and welcome to another video. It's been quite a while since I've filmed one. Uh, I've just been busy with work and all that good stuff. So yeah, sorry about that. But it's a new year, so happy new year to you guys. Hope you've had a good new year, good Christmas and everything. Um, and yeah, I'm going to try to be a bit more consistent with my videos and responding to comments and everything this year. Take it a bit more seriously. So I've been a bit, bit slack with it over the past year or so. But we're going to start this first video of 2019. Bit of a controversial subject in the UK anyway. We're going to be talking about leaders for pike fishing. Now, um, in this country, wire leaders are king. Like, barely anybody uses fluorocarbon, talks about fluorocarbon or anything like that. But today I'm going to talk, go over, like, the three main materials for leaders, for lure fishing this is by the way, um, uh, what's good about them, what's negative about them, why I use them or why I don't use them, um, and yeah, I get this I get this video requested all the time, so I'm finally doing it. Um, I've never filmed it before because before I'd never used titanium leaders, um, but I've been, some of you noticed in my last few videos I've been using them. For a few months now, just just so I, you know, can make this video and not be basing it on, not, you know, not be basing it on what other people have said about these things. I've used all the different types of leaders myself now. Um, by the way, I've started my own web store. You can buy these titanium leaders there. A little plug. <laughs> but, but yeah, we're going to start. I'm going to try to keep this video quite short. Um... Might upset a few people with what I say, but yeah, everyone's got their own opinions. This is my channel and I like to put my opinions on it. So, we'll start off with the basics. The leader that most people start with, and that is steel leaders. So, yeah, this leader's got a bit of red paint on it. That's an 80 pound steel leader. Um... It's so what I started fishing with for pike, probably like for the first full year or two years even. Wire leaders, nothing else. Steel, steel leaders should I say, 49 strand. Um, you know, cheap leaders, very accessible, you can buy them from anywhere. You can get them at any price range, like you have them in China. 20 for a quid or you can, you know, get branded ones. Uh, but yeah, essentially they're all the same material. 49 strand or 7 strand or even single strand steel um, Positives of this leader, cheap the Pike can't bite through it um, Cheap and cheerful basically um, But I think for me personally the negatives outweigh this which is how easily it kinks you can see that That is permanently kinked, no way of getting that out and We'll just put a kink in there there we go, that, that's kinked permanently now, so yeah, that is an issue. One or two fish on steel leaders and they're messed up, they're not going to, the yours aren't going to fish right on a leader that's kinked as bad as this, you can't really see it that well on the camera, but yeah, big pain, so steel leaders. They're good to have in your bag as sort of a backup leader. Um, and I use them for bait fishing and whatnot. But in terms of lure fishing, they're not really that practical. Um, and this £80, pound, it's, it's not going to cause damage to the pike or anything. You know, wrapping around, sticking <laughs> stick middle finger for it there. But yeah, it's not going to cause damage to the pike wrapping, wrapping around them like that or anything. But the, the thinner strains, sort of £10. Pound, and stuff that people use for perch fishing can cause some real damage and I have seen damage caused to pike from that uh, which is why I don't use it but you know people would rather shred up a pike's mouth than risk fluorocarbon so yeah it has steel leaders um, that's the first leader ticked off um, and next people after steel leaders I think people either go one or two ways so either go titanium or fluorocarbon. 
Talk about the titanium ones next. Uh, super stiff material. Very stiff. So it's perfect for fishing jerk baits and everything. Um, kink resistant, you know. Well, I, I say kink resistant. Stuff like that won't kink it. A pike won't kink it. But if you bent this, bent this double and crimped it with some pliers, it would be kinked. Uh, so it's, it's sort of like 90% kink resistant. It'll stay straight against normal fishing. But if you like, put it in your pocket and sit on it you might kink it so <laughs> yeah um so yeah it's strong this is 100 pound quite thick but uh yeah nice strong leader the lower breaking strains are knotable or crimpable this is crimped and a bit of experimenting about i find that you've got to crimp it really hard or it'll slip through i've actually double crimped these on both sides uh just to prevent that and Yeah, it can be quite awkward bending the wire because you don't want to bend it too much because it can crack as well. So yeah, positives of this. Super durable leader. Strong. Quite stiff but also still flexible. It's not like a solid stainless steel leader that you can buy. Like a jerkbait leader or whatever they call them. Uh, but yeah. Super, super stiff. Strong. The lower braking strains have got a bit of flex to it. This probably would if I was strong enough to pull it. They've got a bit, little bit of stretch to them. Not that it really makes a difference. But, um, yeah, so the positives are it'll last you forever. And uh, it doesn't kink. Um, but the negatives for this, two negatives really. Really, really quite expensive. Uh, I think like 15 metre, no, 15 foot spool. It's sort of like 20, 30 quid of the American fishing wire stuff. It's pr pretty steep. Um, I use 18 inch leaders. So a foot and a half. But I use sort of like 21 inches of material to make them. So I'm only going to be getting 10 leaders max off 30 quid. So yeah, quite expensive. And obviously you're paying for your snaps and your swivels and everything as well. Uh, so there's the expense. And I've not noticed this myself. But... If you pull your pull your loops a bit too tight or something, they can just fracture and break completely off, like in really cold temperatures or something. I'm not too sure about that, but I have seen people talking about that on like forums and stuff like that. So yeah, that could be an issue. But personally, using these, I've not had an issue with them, other than they cost me a lot of money. <laughs> but yeah, so. Yeah, titanium, decent leader, a lot better than steel if you're willing to pay the price. Um, nowhere really sells 18 inch ones as well, I wouldn't recommend using less than 18 inch. Companies that sell them like Fox and Daiwa, they're all sort of 12 inch, which is, yeah, really short, you know, a leader like that long. It's not, not really good. So, yeah, that's titanium. And what I use quite a lot, which, which is what causes a bit of controversy in the spot is fluorocarbon leaders uh this is 80 pound which is like the weak the, the lowest um breaking strain that i'd recommend uh you, you want to be looking for something about a mil thick uh one mil diameter uh this is 0.91 like i say it's like the lowest i'd go but fluorocarbon pros cons well pros it's got a bit of stretch to it it's pretty much kink resistant. It will kink slightly, you know, you'll get bends in it and stuff, but they'll come out with fishing and, you know, they won't mess the presentation of your lures up. Um, visibility. I mean, I don't use it for visibility, but, you know, people say that it's virtually invisible underwater. I'm not sure I'd agree with that after seeing it on water wolf footage, but, you know, for... If you're fishing coloured water on a bright day, yeah, your, your black leaders are going to show off big time. But this this would be like invisible in that sort of situation. So that's another pro. Um, quite cheap. I mean, what I use is Berkeley Trialine, which is pretty cheap. Probably like 20 quid for 75 yards, which is, you know, last... Uh, well, I've still got my first spool I bought and I've been using it about two years. So, 
yeah, last year, last year a long time. Um, can crimp it or not it? I would recommend not in it. This trace is crimped, but uh, your crimps do slip a bit. Like you block, you've got to blob your ends just in case they slip. But yeah, you can crimp it or not it. Um, and pike, I know people say, oh, pike can slice through it like butter and that, but they, they really can't. I've never even had a leader damaged by a pike. I've caught literally hundreds of pike on them, you know. Um, but yeah, the people that say that sort of thing have never used them or they've watched pike fight or something where they get bit off, but you don't even know what diameter they're using on there. So yeah, it's not really a valid argument in my opinion. Um, negatives of fluorocarbon is... Um, Negatives of fluorocarbon, let me think. People tell you off on the bank for using it, that's a negative. Um, the, if you leave it in your car when it's really hot, that can damage it as well. Um, and there's quite quite a lot of fake fluorocarbon out there, so you've got to be careful. One of the things you need to look for, if you buy a spool and you want to see if it actually is fluorocarbon, so this is Berkeley Trail in Mono. It's pretty much the same diameter as the fluorocarbon but it's like well softer like the fluorocarbon is really stiff and rigid because fluorocarbon and mono are a different material a lot of people don't realize that but they are uh, so yeah mono is a lot softer than fluorocarbon your fluorocarbon is a lot lot stiffer uh, you can just feel how, how much harder it is in your fingers when you squeeze it you know you can squeeze this and feel it squash and this is rock solid um, but the main difference between fluorocarbon and mono is if you burn the end of fluorocarbon like so you'll get a little blob and that you squeeze it it'll stay as a blob that's just dried hard plastic now whereas your mono burn it Go to a blob, same as the fluorocarbon. I'll focus on it. Go to a blob, the same as the fluorocarbon. But when you pull on that, yeah, so it just like melts like plastic. So yeah, that's the difference. Just just so you know. Um, but yeah, a little bit of an explanation about leaders, fluorocarbon titanium or steel I mean steel leaders are fine in terms of pipe safety all three are in my opinion um, but you know this is this is your super budget leader your steel your titanium is your expensive bulletproof thing and your fluorocarbons your you know middle of the road it's, like, it's really nice to use soft supple it's not perfect with jerk bait fishing you know it's a lot easier to fish jerk baits on a titanium leader but it's it's doable that right, camera just cut out for some reason but as i was saying comment section is down below if you want to start any arguments or leave any suggestions or anything uh but yeah i survived for this first video hopefully i'll get out fishing soon and film some but i've not really been feeling pike fishing that much lately i've just been wanting to go cod fishing and stuff so yeah we'll see we'll see if i get out and if i don't i'll just do another sitting here talking to you video so i want to try and get one every week this year but yeah that does it for this video anyway hope it's been informative hope it's not been that boring as well and yeah don't forget to subscribe and i'll catch you next time